Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome into the Techno Tinker. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to start a multi-part uh, kind of series, if you will, on how to bring older hardware into a newer light, uh, kind of give it a new life. It applies to both desktops and laptops for the most part. It's hoping to be about a three or four part series. So let's just kind of jump into it and just kind of get things rolling for today. So I'm going to start off with memory on this one. This seems to be a big thing that I see around in different posts on Facebook um, getting mixed up with is when it comes to different channels, you have your A channel and B channel for desktop CPUs. You want to make sure they're both populating if you're using two sticks, both A and B. And so you want them typically in the farthest two away. So uh, slot two and slot four away from the CPU is where most manufacturers have it but again reference yours and double check with yours to make sure but you don't want them to be next to each other in both the B or both in the A channel like so you'll still get the full capacity so if you have you know say for instance you had two 8 gig sticks you still have 16 gigs total because it's registering both and they would still run at the rated speed. If it's say 3200 megahertz, you're still gonna get 3200 megahertz. The difference is gonna be your overall performance for the memory is gonna be a lot less because the CPU splits into two channels that it can read from. And so instead of reading from both channels at the same time, now you're limiting it to one channel. So if you ran them in two channels, the CPU and RAM can work together and more or less move data twice as fast because now you're using both of the channels that it's meant to populate. Now you can just run one um, or you could populate all four or run three sticks in any combination, but you wanna make sure that you're utilizing both A and B channels if, that, if you're running two or more sticks. Now if your motherboard only has two slots, then that's the A and B slot and you just populate um, one or the other now well since we're on the topic of memory we can continue with that one so I've got a couple different um, pull out some sticks of RAM from my inventory and so I've got so dim from laptops over here and then desktop memory over here you can mix and match brands and capacities for the most part. I'm not gonna say that you won't or may not run into an issue, but I have yet to run into an issue with the three brands that I have in front of me. The biggest thing outside of placement of memory that you need to keep in mind when trying to upgrade uh, your RAM sticks uh, is you can mix and match brands of capacity. You don't wanna mix and match speeds of RAM. Uh, so for instance, this top one is 3200 megahertz, where these bottom two are 3600 megahertz. So if I was to socket all three of these into my computer, with the added cost of the higher speeds of these two, they would only run at 3200 megahertz because they will only run at the speed of the slowest stick that you have installed. So if you spend money on a single stick and say you get a 4000 megahertz stick, if you have say a 3200 in there, that extra cost that you just spent is now wasted because now it's only gonna run at the speed of the slowest one. So you wanna make sure the speeds are all the same. So if you're gonna be upping the speed and wanna go a little bit faster because you found a deal or something like that, you need to replace all of them. Um, otherwise, look at the one that you currently have for speed wise and then match that speed. You don't necessarily, like I said, need to match brands or match capacities but I would also recommend if you have say a single eight gig stick going up to a minimum of 16 gigs, any more 16 gigs is the minimum recommendation for one video games, but a lot of applications. Um, if you start running eight gigs anymore, if you try multitasking, you can fill up eight gigs and start having stability issues really quick anymore, especially if you're streaming while playing games or listening to music with Chrome open and got a couple tabs open and trying to play games, um, any type of multitasking needed to have recommended at least a minimum of 16. Um, eights getting very limited anymore. 
for laptop memory so dim there's only going to be a maximum of two channels from my knowledge with laptops um, both of mine have either one or two slots it doesn't matter what slot you slot it in um, typically you'd want to go with the a slot first and then work to the b um, but i haven't had an issue with mine planted around swapping them from a to b channels and just running one stick it registers it just fine so you don't need to worry about that with laptops it's more so of desktops but the same principle applies you can mix and match brands and capacities you just same thing you do not want to mix and match speeds so like this is 2666 speed where this is 3200 if i socketed both of these into my laptop it would only run at the 2666 so this crucial would be a waste of the added money for that and then you can dig and dive deeper into memory for speeds of like cache latency and then timings you can run tighter timings looser timings i'm not going to get into that a whole lot today that's more advanced of beyond what i was trying to get for the scope of this video i can make a future video on that if that's something you guys would like to see um, but now moving on to hard drives is going to be the biggest thing you can do to bring life into an older computer is if you have a desktop this would be a hard disk drive for a desktop this would be a hard disk drive for a laptop so if your laptop is running a hard disk drive or if you're still running a hard disk drive for Windows at least um, or any big games that have a lot of loading I would highly highly recommend moving to a solid state drive solid state drives have came down in price you can pick up for both a two and a half inch and an m.2 nvme uh, for both about crucial samsung's a little bit more expensive crucial you can pick up about 50 bucks for one terabyte in either either forms and then two terabytes is about a hundred bucks um, in either form for crucial samsung runs a little bit more on the expensive side than that but it's still pretty pretty in the ballpark uh close but the that's the, gonna be the biggest thing if you want to increase responsiveness low times uh, booting into windows stuff like that move away from a hard disk drive onto a solid state hard disk drives still have their place like i pulled this out of inventory this is a spare for my server that i run um really, really like these drives but the hard disk drives still have their place but for overall just general performance highly recommend saving up a little bit of money and moving to a solid state drive and then another thing to go with that to make even a little bit more performance would be to run two drives and put windows on one or a c drive on one and then put everything else on a second one so just run your core core programs and stuff that you want more or less with windows on the windows drive and in all your games um if you have like adobe uh apps stuff like that run that on a second drive and that way you're not loading everything with windows on one drive it'll increase your boot times it'll increase your responsiveness it'll increase the loading times in or decrease the loading times in video games if you have it on a separate drive because that one drive is not trying to multitask and do multiple things now that is stuff that i would recommend for hardware wise now you can get into graphics cards and do all of that i'm not going to touch on graphics cards on this graphics cards are pretty much their own video on that topic because there's so many different combination of cards between different brands intel's in that now uh, making gpus so that's its whole other thing and i'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible if you already already had a graphics card in it and say it's just been turned off for a while or you just want to kind of freshen it up to play some newer newer games that are coming out uh, the next video is going to be software related stuff so trying to increase boot times and everything through windows trying to uh, kind of put a little bit of a dirty overclock on it for both the graphics card and maybe the cpu depending on what cpu you have 
try to get some free performance out of it, maybe a couple FPS increase. Then the third one will be about trying to get it as cool as possible, repasting the CPU, optimizing fan flow, just to try to get your case as thermally efficient as possible to bring the temperatures down, hopefully even by a couple degrees to where maybe you're in the next boost bin for the graphics card or you know maybe just a couple more clocks on the clock speed for your CPU. If you guys would like to have me do a build, I have um, 900s, uh, 10 hundreds, 20, and then 30 series GPUs from NVIDIA, I can do a build. Um, this is an E8400 Intel uh, DDR2. And so I can do a build on this one just to see how CPUs from back in 08 can fare to newer games now. And I also have a 4790K that I have as well that I can dig out and try to make a video on and pair with a couple different graphics cards and see what type of performance you can get, you know, applying a little bit of an overclock and messing around with different different window settings and different RAM configurations. If that's something you guys would like to see, let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm always open to, uh, for suggestions. If you guys have any ideas or suggestions you want to make for future content, let me know. Uh, I have a bunch of videos in line that I want to do after this series. I thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a good day and until next time.